Hi there, this is Heather of Shutterbug 101. Today I'll be going over how to transfer pictures from your Panasonic using the Panasonic S5 to your cell phone using the Panasonic Image app. Let's get started. So when it comes to transferring from the camera to your cell phone or smart device, today we are using the Panasonic S5, but if you have an S5, if you have a G9, a G85, GX85, or even a, something as small as like a ZS100 or 200 or FZ80, you can transfer from um, any of these Panasonic cameras that have the wireless ability to the Panasonic Image app. And we're gonna go ahead and show you what else the app can do today. So you're gonna start by turning your camera on. From there, we're gonna go ahead and go into the menu. From there, a lot of you are going to be unfamiliar with this menu, but you're gonna have a wrench menu. Yours may be a wrench, and you may also have a wrench with a C above it. That's your custom settings. That's actually the setting I would like you to go to. So you are gonna go to your C menu, and those that have the S camera are just gonna stick with the regular wrench here. So when we go over and whoop, we go over and we go two categories down, you'll find that we have our Wi-Fi options. So for those that do not have the S, you go to the C wrench rather than just the wrench. You're going to go to Wi-Fi, same thing. You're going to go Wi-Fi function. Then you're going to go new connection. You're going to go ahead and go to send images stored in camera, smartphone. You're going to go ahead and go direct to the destination. Let's go to a manual connection, where at this point, we're gonna bust out the phone. So from here, we're gonna go ahead, access our Wi-Fi, and we are gonna go ahead and choose out the S5 connection. Perfect, so we're gonna go and connect to that Wi-Fi, go back to, go back to the app, all right, we're gonna go ahead, establish a Wi-Fi with the iPhone, yes. We're gonna go ahead and allow access to all photos. From there, we're gonna go ahead and select iPhone. We can go ahead and change the settings that we would like these pictures at and change our size from original to change it. I'm gonna say original. You can have it do JPEG, raw and JPEG, or the raw file that you took. Now, if you took your picture in JPEG, it won't be available in raw. However, if you took your picture in raw, you can absolutely save it as a JPEG. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go back, and we are going to set that. So we can do a single select or multi-select. So if we select multi, I can go through here and I can pick the ones that I would like. I can pick this one and then maybe do this one and decide I like those, okay. You hit okay. Send time, yes. And it's gonna go ahead and transfer those right over to my phone. Transfer is complete. Files are left because of the destination limit. So I noticed for my phone, it transferred one, but it's, uh, it's a video. <laughs> So the camera says the transfer is complete, but saying use Lumix Sync for the camera to connect to, which is interesting. So this is actually new to me. So while I'm downloading Panasonic Lumix Sync, um, I have found out that with the S cameras, the S1, S1R, S5, all of them are using the Panasonic Lumix Sync app versus if you have a G camera, a Micro Four Thirds camera, G100, G85, a FC80, a point and shoot ZS100, they're all actually going to use the Panasonic Image app. So you're gonna follow up to the steps that I had told you 
except when you select your pictures, they'll actually be able to go into your phone. If you have the S system, stay tuned. We're gonna go ahead and open that up. Okay, allow, agree, yes, yes, next, all photos. Sure, let's use Bluetooth. Okay. To make the smartphone automatically connected with the camera, register the camera with the application. You can do this later from the user guide. We'll just do that later in the home. Okay, so it's letting you know, step by step, operate the camera to perform setup. Turn the camera on, press the menu set button. So we're gonna go ahead, turn the camera off, turn the camera back on. We're gonna go to the menu. Next. Is letting us know select Bluetooth in the setup menu. Next. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and turn on Bluetooth. I guess, oh, we gotta do it in set. I should really read my instructions. Next. Right from there, check the camera's device name. Next. Okay, that's it. Sorry about the fingerprints. Do a lot of touching on that screen to try and get this to work. Okay, now it's connecting. All right, we want to join. Camera has been successfully registered with the application. Okay. So from there, we can now import images. who would like to join. From there, it's gonna give us access to all of these pictures that we took. Now notice it's gonna indicate that we also have them in RAW, we have videos, which we can transfer right over to the phone. So if I just want to transfer, say, this one over here, and we go to the share to phone button, it does say depending on the OS of the smartphone, raw files may not be displayed correctly. So if we go OK, it's going to copy that over. And then what we can do, go ahead, go to our photos, and you can see here that the photo actually pops up as raw, it does not give you a displayed image because you do have to open this up in a program like Lightroom, which you can have on your phone. Now if we go back to the app, we can also do remote shooting with this. You can also do this on the Panasonic Image app as well. So keep that in mind when you are shooting with something other than the S cameras. So if I turn this camera outward here, you can see now that if I have my camera turned this way, we can see my very messy desk where I need to find a spot for my printer. Right now it's just sitting on my desk. I got my GoPro over here. Anyway, getting to the app here, you can see that we have quite a few things that we can change. Right now we have access to the full screen. We do have the touch screen available. If we want to be able to access that, you can change the display of the screen itself. You do have a couple of custom tabs here, which is great. We have the white balance, the ISO. We do have the shutter speed and aperture controls. We have our exposure control as well as our quick menu. We have our record button to record a short segment of video and a shutter button to take the picture, which is pretty great. You also, with the three lines, can change all of these other options. Your metering mode, your photo style, your aspect ratio, your picture quality from RAW to JPEG, a HDR setting called HLG photo, high resolution mode. There are so many things that you can do 
with these settings here. You can practically control every aspect of the camera itself in the app remotely. As you can see, it's pretty responsive, pretty real time, not a huge lag there. So that is great. And you'll find, like I said, the same way with the Panasonic Image app that in the home area here, while well, it will be a little, dis it'll be displayed a little differently than this one here where you have the remote shooting versus just the shutter remote control where it doesn't give you a live option. In the Panasonic Image app, even though I can't control it with this, you can see here, it has the remote operation, it has the transfer image. You would access them the same way. You can also geotag from the app, which means that you can add a GPS tag to the photo. Now keep this in mind, this is at the time you're tagging it, not from where the photo was taken exactly. So if you're going on a cruise, you go on a boat, you take some photos and then you get back on the boat and decide to geotag, it's going to say that you were experiencing all that right from the ship. We have Snap Movie, we have Photo Collage, there's a couple of creative options that you can use in there. Highlight Photo Collage, where it'll put something together for you. Camera settings for copying, and then you have the Bluetooth shutter remote control, very similar to the other app here. Other than that, it pretty much sums up how to use your Panasonic camera with the app. And we both learned something new today. You have the Panasonic Image app, you have the Panasonic Sync, the Lumix Sync app. Um, so Sync for S series, uh, Panasonic Image for all the other ones. And if you guys have any questions at all through the process, it can be a little frustrating setting it up at first, which is why it has such a low star rating. Same as all the other mobile phone options for the manufacturers. And while it can be frustrating the first time around, when you open up the app to use it again, it'll automatically connect to your camera every time because it's just the introduction of it that takes a little bit of time versus everything after. It'll automatically look for that Wi-Fi signal every time you want to access that. So again, if you get lost, if you have questions during this process, please leave me a comment below. I'll get to you when I can. I also have walkthroughs of the Canon app, Nikon app, Sony app, and the Olympus app. The Fuji app is going to be the uh, last one of the series, so keep an eye out for that. And until next time, keep your eye out for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye.